In this talk, I'm going to present Geniform Papers. Geniform Papers is a technology that allows you to present a file that is at the same time, first, a valid portable database format, a PDF document, second, an HTML page with JavaScript and all kinds of dynamic stuff, and third, a virtual machine image. This is all in one file, and how that's going to work, I will explain in this video. But let's first look at the problem. What is the problem? So when presenting research papers, typically, at least in computer science, or in particular databases, the domain I'm working in, we have a LaTeX source that is automatically compiled into a PDF file. You use LaTeX for that, that compiles that document into PDF. And of course, you include some graphs, graphs from measurements, from experiments you did with your software. Typically, those graphs are produced by different software. We use GNUplot, you might be using different tools, but in the end, there's no connected workflow. So that is what this picture is symbolizing. The yellow part is the integrated workflow, so the graphs are really connected to the LaTeX, and then they are compiled into PDF, but the software artifacts and the result files you create are somehow external. So typically, there's some extra process where your executables, the software you're going to present in the paper, is executed either manually or using some scripts. And from that you create some result files. Could be CSV files, could be a database, whatever, but it's an extra file. And those result files are then used as input for, say, GNUplot, and then you produce graphs from that. So this is a separated workflow. It's not connected to the document anymore. And this is kind of a problem Forever, in all kinds of situations, when you go back to, in all kinds of situations, we want to go back to the data that you use to produce those graphs. So, for instance, once a paper gets published, you just have the PDF. And now maybe you look at some graph and uh, you have some doubts about the data. You want to go back to the data. You want to go back to the software to reproduce the results, to really understand what's going on. It might be just to be on the safe side that this result can really be reproduced to build your work upon that paper. Yeah, that might be one justification, just to say, hey, this is cool what those guys did, but I really, really want to be sure that what those guys present in the paper can be reproduced. And then you may want to go back to, to the authors and then look at the data, look at the software artifacts. The, the other reason might be that you have some doubts on, on the results and want to fiddle with that. Or, or the third reason might be you want to have a better understanding. Maybe the, the paper itself is not so complete in describing what's going on. So this is very difficult with standard PDF because typically the software is not included, the, the data is not included, how to get from the data to the graphs, nothing of, of that is included. So you may find yourself writing emails to the original authors asking for data and code. And unfortunately, often those authors don't provide the data, don't provide the code for, for all kinds of excuses. So we provide a technology that makes it much easier for you to ship data and software artifacts as part of your standard, standard paper. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate now. So let's switch to something I prepared. Here we go. So this is a sample PDF file we created using our technology. Let's open it. Actually, this file is a demo we wrote for VLDB 2015. This is a four-page demo paper. You can find, find it in the VLDB proceedings. And it looks like a typical paper. So you have here some graphs showing some measurement data and it's a snapshot you can't interact with the data here you have some pivot table doing some grouping on some attributes and then displaying measurement data so the typical stuff you would expect in a research paper in particular in computer science but here again we have the same problem we can't go back to the data so how could we, fi could we fix that well, maybe I give a phone call to my mom and my mom is not so illiterate in computer science, but maybe sometimes she has a nice suggestion. And what she suggested to me is I just rename this thing to HTML. As HTML is dynamic, right? HTML plus JavaScript, you can do whatever you want on a web page. So why not give it a try with this document? We just rename it to HTML. Well, the operating system is going to complain about that, obviously. And now we try to open that. Yeah, it sounds uh, weird. This is never going to work, obviously. Let's give it a try anyway. So 
the browser fires up, that's a web browser, and it looks like a standard PDF, right? Basically, this is a PDF displayed in HTML. That's how it looks like. But if we look at the graphs, we see, and we, we use the mouse to hover over the data, we see that there's now some dynamic component. Here there's some explanation for the data. This is something you can't do in PDF. So what we're seeing here actually is an HTML page that happens to look very similar to the actual PDF we, we saw before. So what we're seeing here is an HTML page that, was, that is contained in the PDF file. So you see more features when you look at the top or left corner here, there's a little symbol. If we hit this, what happens is another window pops up and what we're seeing here is a full-blown database engine, a full-blown OLAP engine actually, that allows us to play with the data. Well, the fun thing about that is that this is totally offline. You don't need to install anything to make this happen. All the data that was used to produce a paper in the first place, plus the database engine, plus the visualization, all of that is contained in this single file you've seen a moment ago. So all of this file, this file contains all of the data, you, all of the database engine, all the machinery that, that you're currently seeing. There's no online thing you need to connect to. So what we're seeing here is the data and, and some visualization of the data so we can play with the data. This is a typical drill down you would use in a database system. So we first group by machine. Within the same machine, we group by table schema. Within the same table schema, we group by query. So I could um, play with the data. Whenever I play with the data, the result is recomputed. Here we have some confidence interval being computed. Yeah, and so forth. So here you could also, um, you can see the query that's used to to query the internal database. You can download the query result as a CSV file. Downloading means from within the paper, of course. It's not from a server, it's from within the paper. This is downloaded to your desktop or here open some text document with the data, which you can, can then use for further processing in a different tool. So let's close that window. Let's look at some other features here. For each graph, you see that you can open it up. Then an extra pop-up window appears. You can download the data. You can switch to visualization, you know, see the, the data behind the graph, stuff like that. And you can do that with any graph. That's basically what, what the technology provides. And again, this is always in the same file. There's nothing you need to install. It's just a matter of renaming from PDF to HTML and then you see this data. So how does that work? That's an interesting question. Let's go back to the presentation. So the main idea here is that we have a file that can be interpreted as a valid PDF file and an HTML file at the same time. So the PDF viewer will be happy with the file and the HTML viewer will be happy with the file at the same time. And it's a matter of hiding data in each other's command files. So here, this is a command from the PDF view. You see it here. The percentage symbol is, uh, is a command. However, in HTML, this is not a command, so this is going to be red. So here we can use that to hide some stuff and vice versa. So it's a matter of very, in, in a clever way, uh, mixing the two formats into one file. And the good thing is the viewers these days are very sloppy with those file formats for a good reason. The reason is that they want to make sure that whatever they displayed in the past is also going to be displayed in the future. If, if you had a browser that displayed a particular PDF file and then all of a sudden this is not displayed anymore, users are not going to like that. So they want their, their data to be displayed in any future version. So the, the producers of those PDF viewers and HTML viewers are very sloppy because they don't want to make users unhappy. So these readers are very sloppy in reading the data. They read over the data and try to continue reading um, and uh, to somehow get through the file. And therefore, um, this reading process is very sloppy and they can use it, and therefore you can use it to, to, to mix the two, two things into one. And that's basically what we do. So the cool thing that, that we did is we have full LaTeX, LaTeX connectivity, which means now we have this connected workflow where we specify the results already in the LaTeX file. And we also specify how to assemble those graphs from those results 
in the LaTeX file. So in order to create such a general form document, what you do is basically in LaTeX you write something like that. You specify this package we created, PDBF. You somehow specify a data source. This can be a SQL dump, but it can also be a CSV file, or it can be a JDBC connection to a database. Then afterwards, you specify how you want to have that chart. What chart do you want to have? So here you say what is the width, the height, what is displayed on the x-axis, the y-axis, and then you display and then you use a little SQL command connecting the data with the graph. Basically, this is fetching the data from the database and displaying it in the graph. So when we compile the LaTeX document, we basically extract all data from the source, whatever that source may be. So if it's JDBC data source, we extract it from there and embed it into the file, into the document to make that happen. That's all you have to do. So if we, let's open, open the file if you go to desktop um, so if you inspect our document all you have to do is So that's what you do, just call Java, this is Java you're providing, this is a minimal document, and then this Java program will be calling LaTeX, will do all the magic, and then you end up with a minimal document. So if you go to this document, here we go. Now we have a new document using this stuff with some dynamic overlay. But this was computed from LaTeX. So if you open this in LaTeX, let's do that. Here we go. Here's the document, you see, there's not much data here, not much text here to display. Basically, you have these chart documents here. Maybe make a space here in between chart and then the width and height as shown before. Some parameters can be set here, for instance, whether you want to have log scale or not, what the chart type is you want to have, and so forth. And then basically, this is a connecting command here. Here, we already see a couple of examples that can be used for data sources, so you can use this DB SQL text as we're calling it. Basically here you issue create table commands that contain your data with a couple of insert statements. That's one way of doing it for, for tiny data sets. Here's another variant. You could say I connect to a Postgres instance and then suck the data from that Postgres instance. Again, this only, this, this Postgres instance only has to be available when compiling the document. All the data will be sucked from that Postgres document into your file and then you don't have to have that connection anymore. Huh? It's, a, it's a major goal of this format. Everything is offline and available without any external tools. Except a web browser. A web browser and a PDF viewer, if you have those, it's all fine. It's going to work out of the box. So that's basically the format. I want to show you one other thing finally. Let's go back up here. Here we go. So, so far I've shown this one, but still we don't have these software artifacts connected with documents. And that's a thing we're working on how to do that. So future work could look into also connecting the software artifacts to the entire pipeline. So ideally all of the stuff you're producing for your paper should somehow be connected into one workflow. And eventually maybe there's just one button you hit and all the paper, all the graphs get reproduced automatically. That would be really cool. We're not there, but we have some ideas on how to connect this the software to the document and that's what I'm going to show now. So we renamed this to PDF and HTML again. I can rename it at any time if you want to PDF. Here we go. Here's our PDF. But I could also rename this one to a third file name extension, OVA. What is OVA? OVA is the file system image format of VirtualBox. Now, if I double click this one, VirtualBox is going to open. That's a virtual machine. Now I click import. The virtual machine is imported. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot this paper. 
I'm gonna boot the paper, okay? Let's go. I boot it, VirtualBox will try to boot this as if it were an operating system. What you see is this little arcade game. Here is a very simple text game where you can shoot down little rockets. So here you see there are a couple of databases and down here, and this is an insider joke, and this is one size fits all database system shooting down specialized database systems. It's a little database researchers insider. Whatever, it's a little game. All of this is totally contained in this file. Actually, it's in the VLDB proceedings from 2015. So I welcome you to give it a try. Yeah, this is all hidden, and of course, this could be used to hide entire operating systems. Or if you use Docker, you don't even have to put the operating system in there. You can put your code there and make it um, and have all your code archived, all the libraries you ever need. And yeah, of course, there's a size argument. The size argument that people say, well, this is too big. I can't put my operating system in the file and all the code I produced. Yeah, that's true. But in the end, these days, people are streaming 4K videos over YouTube. And that's a lot of data, gigabytes of data. Our restrictions on paper sizes are currently in the order of megabytes. So I don't, see, I don't see any decent argument for saying that papers have to be small, that these files we are sending to our publishers have to be, have to be small. Let's go back to the file. If you look at this file again, this is only 10 megabytes. Why does it have to be 10 megabytes? Only it could be a couple, it could be, a, even if, it, if it's 100 megabytes or a half a gigabyte, you can, you can put many things into such a file. And that is available at our GitHub page, UDS Data Lab PDBF. Here's a URL, and there you can download the stuff. We have a couple of sample documents, documentation with all kinds of stuff that already works. We'll, so if you want to support us, if you want to use the stuff, drop us a line, send us an email. We really want to extend the stuff. We have a couple of ideas we want to implement. So let us know what you think, download the stuff, play with that. We're looking forward to your comments uh, under this video. Thanks.